Thanks for tuning in. After all the sweets I made over the holidays, I think it's time to make something savory and hearty. So join me as I make snert, Dutch split pea soup. My recipe is different and traditionalists will probably say it isn't really snert. I think it is, so don't knock it till you try it. Hi, I'm Twan and welcome to my kitchen. If you're new to this channel, I focus on cooking foods from my home country, the Netherlands, and some of its former colonies, such as Indonesia. Snert has been around for a really long time. The earliest records of a written recipe date back to the 16th century. It was often made in a single pot and would take hours to make. I don't have that kind of time, so I have sped it up and used a pressure cooker instead. Most people use pork and bacon when making snert. However, we don't eat pork, so I've adapted it to use beef stock and chicken sausage. To make snert, you will need 450 grams of split peas that I soaked in water for several hours and then drained, half a celery root chopped, one large potato that I peeled and chopped, one large leek sliced, one large onion chopped, two stalks of celery chopped, one large carrot sliced, a bay leaf, one and a half liters of beef stock, 350 grams of chicken andouille sausage, and whatever meat came off the bones when you made the stock. You certainly can use store-bought beef stock making this recipe. However, I like to make it with fresh stock. So let's look at how I did that. I'll be using a six quart instant pot for this recipe. The ingredients I used to make the beef stock are 700 grams of bone-in short ribs, 700 grams of beef shank bones, one onion, one celery stalk, one carrot, half a celery root, one tablespoon of tomato paste, one bay leaf, three garlic cloves, half a teaspoon of kosher salt and half a teaspoon of ground black pepper. I start by adding my shank bones to a pot of cold water, making sure they're fully submerged. I then turn on the heat and bring the water to a boil. Every so often, I use a spoon to skim off any of the foam that floats on top. This way, all impurities are removed from the bones. After 20 minutes, I remove the bones from the pot of water. I place the short ribs on a roasting pan and drizzle a little bit of olive oil on it. Using a pair of tongs, I rotate it to make sure there is olive oil on all sides. Then I season it with a little bit of salt. After all the short ribs are on the roasting pan, I add my shank bones and drizzle some olive oil on that as well. My oven was preheating to 220 degrees Celsius or 425 degrees Fahrenheit. I then placed the roasting pan in the oven and let the bones and the short ribs roast for 20 minutes. While the short ribs and bones are, are roasting in the oven, I peeled and sliced a carrot. I chopped a stalk of celery. To make it easier to peel the celery root, I first cut it into discs and peel each one of those. I discard the peel and cut the rest of it into little cubes. Next, I peeled my onion and cut it into big chunks. After the short ribs and bones have roasted for 20 minutes, I remove the roasting pan from the oven and carefully turn the, the bones and the short ribs. I then add all my cut vegetables to the pan and put it back in the oven to roast for another 20 minutes. After the second 20 minutes have passed, I remove the roasting pan from the oven and transfer everything to the insert of my instant pot. I then add a cup of cold water to my roasting pan and using a wooden utensil scrape up all the bits. I then pour all of that into the Instant Pot insert as well. I load the insert into the Instant Pot and I add a bay leaf, the garlic cloves, pepper and tomato paste. I then added enough water to fill my Instant Pot to the max pressure cooking line. Close the lid, make sure the vent is set in the sealing position and I cooked it on high pressure for two hours. After the two hours of pressure cooking was over, I let it do a natural release for approximately 40 minutes and then I released the rest of the pressure. I removed the meat and bones from the pot, keeping the meat separate. Using a spider, I remove all the vegetables from the stock as well. And then to make sure that my stock is nice and clear, I pour it through a cheesecloth lined strainer. Now my broth is ready to use. I've added two tablespoons of grapeseed oil to my instant pot that I set to the hottest saute mode. I waited until the oil was nice and hot and now I'm going to add the sausage first and I'm going to saute that to just kind of caramelize them. That adds a nice depth of flavor. 
Like I said, snack has been part of Dutch culture for a really long time. It is so important that it was added to the official Dutch intangible heritage inventory. I'll put a link to that website in the description below. The sausage has fried enough. I'm going to add the onions, celery, and carrots, and saute these together for a few more minutes. You just wanna saute this until the onions turn translucent. This is looking good. Now we're just going to add the rest of the ingredient with the stock first. I'm actually gonna turn off the saute mode. And now carefully add the stock. Now my potatoes, celery root, leeks. Some of it goes on the floor. Split peas. The meat and the bay leaf. We're just going to stir it around, make sure that all the split peas are covered in liquid. I'm going to add the lid. Make sure this is on the sealing position. I'm going to pressure cook it on high for 18 minutes. If you're enjoying this video, please click the like and subscribe button. It will really help our channel. If you want YouTube to notify you whenever we post a new video, click the bell. After I was done sauteing, my wife noticed that I had a lot of oil splatters on my shirt, so I changed shirts. So if you're doing this, be careful that you don't get oil all over your clothes as well. It's been 20 minutes. I'm going to do a release on the pot. Careful, this is really hot. Just gonna give it a good stir to get everything combined. Now, pea soup doesn't become snared until it rests overnight in the fridge. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm gonna pour this in a container and store it in the fridge and we'll do a tasting tomorrow. Good afternoon, the snared rested in the fridge overnight and I heated some up on the stove. I also got myself a nice piece of crusty bread. We typically eat this with uh, a dark rye bread, but I don't have any, so I'm using a crusty Italian loaf. But let's first try a bite without the bread. Eet smakelijk. Mm. So good. The soup is thick and hearty. I had a little piece of sausage, which has some spice to it, which I very much enjoy. That beef broth really imparted a rich flavor to the soup, but the peas are definitely the star here. So let's have a bite with a piece of bread. Ah, oh, so good. Mm. I love the texture of the crusty bread with the soup. It is so good. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click the like and subscribe button and don't forget to share it with your friends. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I will post a written recipe on my website, twanskitchen.com, and you can follow me on social media. If you make this recipe, please take a photo and post it on Instagram with the hashtag twanskitchen and I'll feature it in my story and on my website. Thanks, and I'll see you at the next one.